episode 16. Oh no, Ron gasped. It's all right, he's still alive, said Hermione, prodding Errol gently with the tip of her finger. It's not that, it's that. Ron was pointing at the red envelope. It looked quite ordinary to Harry, but Ron and Neville were both looking at it as though they expected it to explode. What's the matter, said Harry. She she sent me a howler, said Ron, faintly. You better open it, Ron, said Neville in a timid whisper. It'll be worse if you don't. My grand sent me one once, and... I ignored it, and it was horrible. Harry looked from their petrified faces to the red envelope. What's a howler, he said. But Ron's whole attention was fixed on the letter, which had begun to smoke at the corners. Open it, Neville urged. It'll all be over in a few minutes. Ron stretched out a shaking hand, eased the envelope from Errol's beak and slit it open. Neville stuffed his fingers in his ears. A split second later, Harry knew why. He thought for a moment it had exploded. A roar of sound filled the huge hall, shaking dust from the ceiling. Stealing the car! I wouldn't have been surprised if they had expelled you! You wait till I get hold of you! I don't suppose you stopped to think what your father and I went through when we saw it was gone. Mrs. Weasley's yells, a hundred times louder than usual, made the plates and spoons rattle on the table and echoed deafeningly off the stone walls. People throughout the hall were swiveling around to see who had received the howler, and Ron sank so low in his chair that only his crimson forehead could be seen. Letter from Dumbledore last night! I thought your father would die of shame! We didn't bring you up to behave like this! You and Harry could both have died! Harry had been wondering when his name was going to crop up. He tried very hard to look as though he couldn't hear the voice that was making his eardrums throb. Absolutely disgusted! Your father's facing an inquiry at work. It's entirely your fault. And if you put another toe out of line, we'll bring you straight back home. A ringing silence fell. The red envelope, which had dropped from Ron's hand, burst into flames and curled into ashes. Harry and Ron sat stunned, as though a tidal wave had just passed over them. A few people laughed, and gradually a babble of talk broke out again. Hermione closed voyages with vampires and looked down at the top of Ron's head. Well, I don't know what you expected, Ron, but you... Don't tell me I deserved it, snapped Ron. Harry pushed his porridge away. His insides were burning with guilt. Mr. Weasley was facing an inquiry at work. After all Mr. and Mrs. Weasley had done for him over the summer. But he had no time to dwell on this. Professor McGonagall was moving along the Gryffindor table, handing out course schedules. Harry took his and saw they had double herbology with the Hufflepuffs first. Harry, Ron, and Hermione left the castle together, crossed the vegetable patch and made for the greenhouses where the magical plants were kept. At least the howler had done one good thing. Hermione seemed to think they had now been punished enough and was being perfectly friendly again. As they neared the greenhouses, they saw the rest of the class standing outside, waiting for Professor Sprout. Harry, Ron, and Hermione had only just joined them when she came striding into view across the lawn accompanied by Gilderoy Lockhart. Professor Sprout's arms were full of bandages, and with another twinge of guilt, Harry spotted the whomping willow in the distance, several of its branches now in slings. 
Professor Sprout was a squat little witch who wore a patched hat over her flyaway hair. There was usually a large amount of earth on her clothes, and her fingernails would have made Aunt Petunia faint. Gilderoy Lockhart, however, was immaculate in sweeping robes of turquoise, his golden hair shining under a perfectly positioned turquoise hat with gold trimming. Oh, hello there, he called, beaming around at the assembled students. Just been showing Professor Sprout the right way to doctor a whomping willow. <laughs> but I don't want you running away with the idea that I'm better at herbology than she is. I just happen to have met several of these exotic plants on my travels. Greenhouse three today, chaps, said Professor Sprout, who was looking distinctly disgruntled. Not at all her usual cheerful self. There was a murmur of interest. They had only ever worked in Greenhouse One before. Greenhouse Three housed far more interesting and dangerous plants. Professor Sprout took a large key from her belt and unlocked the door. Harry caught a whiff of damp earth and fertilizer, mingling with the heavy perfume of some giant umbrella-sized flowers dangling from the ceiling. He was about to follow Ron and Hermione inside when Lockhart's hand shot out. Harry, I've been wanting a word. You don't mind if he's a couple of minutes late, do you, Professor Sprout? <laughs> Judging by Professor Sprout's scowl, she did mind. But Lockhart said, that's the ticket, and closed the greenhouse door in her face. Harry, said Lockhart, his large white teeth gleaming in the sunlight as he shook his head. Harry, Harry, Harry. <laughs> Completely nonplussed, Harry said nothing. When I heard, well, of course, it was all my fault. Could have kicked myself. <laughs> Harry had no idea what he was talking about. He was about to say so when Lockhart went on. Don't know when I've been more shocked. Flying a car to Hogwarts. Well, of course I knew at once why you'd done it. Stood out a mile, Harry, Harry, Harry. It was remarkable how he could show every one of those brilliant teeth, even when he wasn't talking. Gave you a taste for publicity, didn't I? Said Lockhart. Gave you the bug. You got onto the front page of the paper with me, and you couldn't wait to do it again. Oh, no, Professor, see... Harry, 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 said Lockhart, reaching out and grasping his shoulder. I understand. Natural to want a bit more once you've had that first taste. And I blame myself for giving you that, because it was bound to go to your head. But see here, young man, you can't start flying cars to try to get yourself noticed. Just calm down, all right? Plenty of time for all that when you're older. Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. It's all right for him. He's internationally famous already. <laughs> but when I was 12, I was just as much of a nobody as you are now. In fact, I'd say I was even more of a nobody. I mean, a few people have heard of you, haven't they? All that business with he who must not be named. <laughs> he glanced at the lightning scar on Harry's forehead. I know, I know, it's not quite as good as winning Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award five times in a row as I have, but it's a start, Harry. It's a start. He gave Harry a hearty wink and strode off. Harry stood stunned for a few seconds. Then, remembering he was supposed to be in the greenhouse, he opened the door and slid inside. Professor Sprout was standing behind a trestle bench in the center of the greenhouse. About twenty pairs of different colored earmuffs were lying on the bench. When Harry had taken his place between Ron and Hermione, she said, We'll be repotting mandrakes today. Now, who can tell me the properties of the mandrake? To nobody's surprise, Hermione's hand was first into the air. Mandrake, or Mandragoria, is a powerful restorative, said Hermione. 
sounding as usual as though she had swallowed the textbook. It is used to return people who have been transfigured or cursed to their original state. Excellent! Ten points to Gryffindor, said Professor Sprout. The mandrake forms an essential part of most antidotes. It is also, however, dangerous. Who can tell me why? Hermione's hand narrowly missed Harry's glasses as it shot up again. The cry of the mandrake is fatal to anyone who hears it, she said promptly. Precisely! Take another ten points, said Professor Sprout. <laughs> <laughs>